Hello everyone, this is Jason Berry, and I'll be starting up Sonic Talk right away. Um, I actually recorded this episode I'm editing last week, so I'm a little behind, but we'll be getting right away. I wanted to let you know about Sonic Revolution. That's our upcoming Sonic convention on June 12th at the Century Ballroom at Holiday Inn at LAX at Los Angeles, California. Of course, LAX Airport, that is. And we'll be having a nice Greek, you know, get together of all the Sonic community, all the Sonic fans here. We'll be having quite a few guests, including from the Sonic Boom cartoon executive producer Bill Freiberger, who also uh, does the voice of Comedy Chimp and Lady Walrus. Along with him will be Greg Hahn and Alan Denton. Also, uh, from the Archie side of things, we'll have... Tyson Heese, who's uh, doing the art for the upcoming Sonic Mega Drive special coming out in July. And, of course, uh, let Evan Stanley, who's been with the book for quite a few years now, and she does an awesome job. And the legendary Scott Shaw will be with us as well, who's not only worked at the very beginning of the Sonic comics, but on Sonic the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog as well for the cartoon. And we hope to see you there. It's going to be a blast. We might even have more few guests than this. Who knows? And so if you're if you're attending E3 and you're in the L.A. area, come on down. We'd love to have you. And I'll talk to you in a bit. Bye-bye. everyone and welcome to the 36th episode of Sonic Talk. Here in the middle of February, this is the Super Talk Brothers and with us tonight uh, is eh, with us tonight is Alex Peel. Hey there. And GX Echidna. <laughs> who I was just on his spin dash, so you'll have to listen for that. I'll leave a link in the notes and he'll leave a link uh, to this episode in his notes, I'm sure. Or you can just check the Never Shut Up website. All that stuff should be on there. Or if certain things come into play, then there will be even more significant connections. Right. Won't they, Jason? Yeah. Uh, does this have to do with that weird announcement thing that you guys won't tell me for some silly reason? No, this is unrelated. Okay. Anyway, right. uh, on, th- on to the first uh, topic. I normally do what you've been playing. I think I'm going to change it to... Stuff. Stuff talk, Wee. basically. What what we've been doing that doesn't necessarily have to be video games. It could be anything else. So what stuff do you want to talk about, Alex? I saw Donald Trump beating up Mexicans. It was funny. Not too funny, but it it, it was funny. It, got, it made me chuckle. The con- I'm sure the context was funnier than the actual event itself. No, 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 it wasn't. It was just, it was, it was just Donald Trump beating up a bunch of uh, Pancho... Big cap wearing Mexicans. Okay, but, uh, so, so what we've learned is that Alex is a racist. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> That's what they were wearing. Don't, don't look at me. Triumph for the insult dog is the racist. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not judging you by that. I'm judging you by the fact that you liked it. <laughs> oh, come on. Triumph is awesome. But yeah, I guess recently, I guess... About a half hour ago, discovered a uh, triumph for the insult dogs uh, comedy videos on Twitter on, on YouTube. <laughs> well, YouTube he has a Hulu. full ninety-minute election special on Hulu, all about that. Really? So all those things I've been watching are a part of a single ninety-minute special, then? Yes. Huh. Interesting. Well, some keeps of them. pointing out how stupid everybody is, and it's hilarious, yeah, especially he does Trump do that. supporters. No offense. Well. Not a whole lot of offense to Trump supporters. <laughs> um, but uh, I've uh, been, I've, uh, I don't know, I've, I've been busy lately. I've, uh, been, I've uh, been working on a radio show at my college as part of my, uh, the final parts of my, uh, of my uh, degree, my multimedia journalism degree. I'm almost there, and it's like one of the last things i got to do. So I've been doing all sorts of news journalism things. And uh, it's been stressful but fun. So I had to report on uh, this this 
piece of technology called a interactive whiteboard, which is pretty much just a really big touchscreen with windows on it, that this local city, that this local district commission got so that they could do presentations and stuff. You're t- you're talking to a guy who had one of those in most classrooms he's been in. <laughs> wow, what what classroom? What 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 kind of classrooms do they have in Virginia now? They have they have interactive whiteboards like all over the place. I like, haven't what? seen a single one down here in Florida. I mean, well, aside from the one I reported on. <laughs> to be fair, you are in Florida. I'm in South Florida. That's completely different from the rest of Florida. For the most part. <laughs> We're closer to New York. we got lots of New York Jews down here doing stuff. Although they won't pay for taxes, which probably explains why our technology is stuck in the 1990s as far as education goes. There you go. All right. All right, you're right. <sighs> anyway, um, that's pretty much all I really have to talk about. Like, I've been watching The Simpsons. I've been cleaning – while I clean my room in my spare time. I've been playing my uh, Neo Geo CDZ, which uh, is this um, this CD Neo Geo console from SNK released only in Japan at Logue CDs twice as fast as the regular Neo Geo CD. I got my it for God. my birthday. <laughs> yes. So, like, instead of taking five minutes to load a fight in King of Fighters, it takes two and a half minutes, y'all. But, uh, it's, 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 it's an, I've always wanted a, a, uh, a Neo Geo, and I, it was my birthday, so I <laughs> picked one up. And, uh, I, I, I'm done now. Really okay, uh, how about you, GX? What you been up to? That depends. Uh, which crack cocaine do you want me to talk about? Uh, Pokemon Picross, Xenoblade, uh, Yokai Watch. Yokai Watch. Yokai uh, Watch, please. You want me to talk about Yokai Watch? Okay. Please. We've had so, we had this conversation on the spin dash, but it looks like we'll have it again. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, all right, I'll. I, I guess we'll just have to listen to the spin dash then. I can I give the abbreviated version. <laughs> <laughs> the thing, Yo- Yokai Watch is basically. What if Pokemon wasn't as entirely sanitary as it is, if it actually had personality to it? Because mainline Pokemon games, I like them. They are great mechanically. Like, they build off of that um, that uh, Dragon Quest style of gameplay real, really well with a great rock, paper, scissors mechanic on top of it. But Yokai Watch is kind of like, you know, it's easier mechanically, mm. but it is... It just has the personality to it. The monsters talk. They actually have personalities, using the magic word. And it's just... It's fun. It's its like the fun, unprofessional <laughs> version of Pokemon. And, and it's not necessarily the best game, but it's a better... Wor- it's, it's a more entertaining world. So I have a, I have a quick question for you. When I yeah. try Yokai Watch, the demo just completely turned me off. The, the battle system was just not something I was into. Just complaining Pokemon and Yokei Watch from a purely game mechanical standpoint, ignoring the charming characters and world and stuff. How, how would you compare those two? Okay, your, your Yokai characters that you get are entirely autonomous. You do not control them. Yeah. You always have about three out at a time. And you're kind of playing background coach. And in the early game, that that can be an issue. When you're grinding and you're way over leveled for everything, that can be an issue. Uh, when you're actually in the heat of battle, hmm. you're starting to do things like looking, hey, who's low on health? Okay, I need to drag him, I need to drag the circle back. Oh my gosh, this guy just got inspirited with a downplay. I need to drag him back so I can play this little mini game to kind of release the bond that the enemy has on it. Oh no, these other two guys got it, so now I have to quickly get through this. Hey, this guy just charged up a special. I can pop off a special by playing this mini game. Oh my god, this guy needs an item real quick. Uh, th- this thing, this boss is doing things in the background that I need to take my targeting reticule and just kind of do things about. And it gets pretty frantic. Huh. Once you get to the real high level stuff, well, um, you, you make it sound better than game trailers did, which also helped turn me off. Though rest in peace, game trailers. I mean, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm gonna go out and say it. it's not mechanically is not as in depth or as interesting as Pokemon. 
if you're looking for the game that's going to be mechanically great, it's not that. If you're looking for the game that just kind of, that, that kind of has that weird, quirky way that level five just designs shonen boys anime of <laughs> soccer or tiny collectible robots or bizarre men in top hats asking you puzzles. It has that kind of charm to it. And, it's, huh. and I find it funny. Like, it is a funny game. It has a really funny cartoon attached to it. I highly recommend the cartoon if you want to see, what if Pokemon were just stupid? Like, like <laughs> and, and, I, and I don't mean that derisively, because it really is kind of, in the game, none of the characters really, or in the cartoon, none of the actual characters get into legitimate battles. It's more like, oh, this... We're running into a daily problem where this yokai who causes people to pull up their shirts and has a painted <laughs> face on them, oh my shut God. your stomach out. Oh no, this guy is making us spend all our money and referencing Wall Street and asking us if we're communists. <laughs> it's like so. It, there's a so Donald Trump is controlled by a yokai then. Oh, I'm sure Donald Trump is controlled Donald by Trump a yokai. Is a yokai. Donald Trump is a yokai. You can tell by how he's inspirited his constituents. Oh my God! I hope none, I hope none of our listeners are Trump fans. They're gonna hate you, me. You gotta uh, be impressed by the uh, marketing synergy in this thing too. I mean, both the anime and the video game have the kid wearing this watch, which he flips open and lets him see the ghosts, and then he can capture the. And well, he doesn't capture them. He befriends them, and they give him a medal. For beating the crap out of him and then <laughs> making him his friend, and so, he can oh, add that, and he can use that metal uh, later to summon them, and he can actually so, buy these watches and medals and collect the medals in blind bags in the stores. So, it's very so clever. Gonna, now. GX really, GX really wants to say something. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys something. First off, I haven't bought any merch yet. I am almost certainly going to because I know myself well enough. Uh, I gave my friends particular permission that if I were to pay more than five dollars for the dumb toy watch they are permitted <laughs> to kick me in the nuts I gave them that permission oh um, man okay at I same, have to go at down the same to Pennsylvania time, <laughs> at the same time however guess what all okay. of the the toy stuff plays into the game like you can get but here's the thing they're all the QR code. So guess what people on the internet did? They put pictures on them up on the internet so you can cheat and you can scan all these internet pictures and get all sorts of free coins and stuff that you can use in the game to get... Oh, so the QR code codes code. that are on the medals work in the game? But yeah, it's like... They, it. That's they even more it. synergetic than I thought, man. <laughs> Though, despite all this synergy, I've heard that Gilkai Watch is a disaster in the U.S. right now. <laughs> well, it doesn't, uh, it, uh, you know what? It's selling okay at uh, my Walmart, and uh, I think the first batch sold out at GameStop, my local GameStop, and they got another batch that has it that just sat there. I've only heard yeah. good things about how the cartoon's doing. Hmm. That so cartoon it is... It's like it's enjoyable, but at the same time, it's really stupid. <laughs> well, I know. Yeah, that's isn't that yokai watch in a nutshell? Yeah, I, that's. DX. I mean, honestly, that's exactly why I love it. <laughs> I mean, you have you have to accept that. You know what? It, at the end of the day, all of this is nonsense, but it's nonsense with a really charming veneer. Like, you, know, you have a yokai that's a poodle with a Japanese businessman's face on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Might I add a drunk Japanese businessman? <laughs> yeah, they, they they somehow managed to play that off in the uh, in the uh, English dubbing that about him being drunk. But you know, any parent watching that, he's obviously drunk in that scene. <laughs> and then my, and my then, one major crime though about that is his name is Mangy Mutt, and he's freaking half man, and they could have easily just called him Mangy Mutt as a slight pun. Which would it make is, sense. It is a slight pun. It, uh, never mind. <laughs> Although I do like how, like the main character, so the frustrated. main Pikachu-ish uh, character of this um, series is Jabanyan, the cat. Um, I've only seen about four or five episodes, but I haven't seen him win a single battle. He always ends oh, up Jibon getting Jib attacked. 
Is Banyan's fucking... great because he's lazy. Uh, he basically, at a point in the series, he he just starts squatting in uh, Nate's in the main character Nate's uh, house, uh, basically stealing food. And he the best part about him, he has a cat that is obsessed with a J-pop band who all dresses in cat ears and tails. So <laughs> yeah, he has a poster of him in his room or whatever. And it, it, it is so... It, it's meta and stupid and self-aware. It, it, like I said, it's Pokemon if Pokemon were really freaking stupid. Didn't you say this is going to be a quick summary? I was expecting it to be, and then you guys started adding stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little curious. I'm sorry. I missed, I missed the, the Spin Dash one. <laughs> Jason, tell us how you uh, got into the beta of um, of the new Capcom game. <laughs> right. I guess you could call it a beta. I mean, this they're pulling the same move that EA pulled with uh, Star Wars Battlefront, where they're giving you oh. about half a game or a little more than half a game I'd say for this one and if it feels what I'm talking about is Street Fighter 5 which just came out on Tuesday and this just just like uh, Battlefront feels a bit incomplete didn't you say that uh, Street Street Fighter 4 5 has um, more single player content coming like bigger yeah, Sigurd later, that's the problem. You're buying the and game it's now, gonna be free. and you're getting half of the content later. And here's here's the weird thing. Okay, you start off with 16 fighters, which is a decent amount, I think, for, you know, a 2D mm. fighter. I mean, back oh, in the day, we only, I only got 8 fighters back in the day. <laughs> Nowadays, they expect at least 20 to 25 fighters, but 16 I is okay. I expect 50 fighters. <laughs> I expect 52, and, and one of them has to be Bayonetta. You, you want to try everyone out and Dragon find Ball out who you like. Dragon Ball-esque roster. Sorry, sorry, Jason. But basically, we'll, we'll they have a... Uh, it, when you're playing online, they have a casual mode and a ranked mode, and I think like an observer mode where you can watch them. I'm not sure exactly mm-hmm. that. Online, I haven't played too much of because... Um, it was. It's always kicking me out. But when I have been on, I've actually gotten people at my skill level, so I'm happy with that. Um, the good. only single-player modes are training, a story mode, which is only prologue, and pro. That means it's it's single it's single round matches with these udon like comic art uh, cutscenes in between with voice acting that are with still images. And they could literally be as short as two single round matches, and then that epilogue story is a uh, prologue. No epilogue, mm. sorry, story is over, and that's it. <laughs> and the other one is survival, and I will say uh, good stuff about survival. Now survival is um, is up to I think 30 rounds, and then you fight in bison, and your your goal of course is to, to survive till then. And they do this by, if you win the round, you get a bunch of points, and you can spend those points on either enlarging your health bar if you're down, or increasing your attack power, increasing your defense power, adding it to your V bar or to your um, critical bar. Now, so Jason, it offers I... a little, it offers a bit of strategy for a survival mode that normally where you're just going round per round per round. So I kind of really enjoyed that. So survival mode is kind of where the meat of the game for me is right now. Now, Jason. Yes. Since whenever you started talking about this game online, I was kind of a little bit surprised because I did not know that this was a game that you were interested in at all. Are you a fighting game fan? I like fighting games all right, but uh, this one I just kind of let go under the radar. And then I was like, oh, it's coming out now. I better (laughs) go ahead and... (laughs) Pick it up. A... Uh, it's one of those things where I had so much else going on, it kind of escaped. It kind of escaped me. But I mean, I've had Street Fighter Four and Street Fighter Three, but I'm not like, and I'm a casual fan. I'm not really an enthusiast, so to uh, speak. What, what I'm actually curious are is, um, like, like, are you a solid enough player that you know how to put together an effective combo? <clears throat> uh, maybe a three or four hit combo, unless it's like Killer Instinct, in which well, I can <laughs> do a huge combo on that. He uh, he did uh, have uh, uh, a a video series on Sega Mix called uh, Sega Fi- uh, Fighters Fighters Sega, Sega Mix. Sega Mix so, yeah, you know. Okay, I, I, the reason why I ask is I'm always I'm one of those curious. people who uh, like fighting games, but is not that great at it. 
I don't want to people who just smashes the buttons and makes the characters do things. And that's that's kind of where I'm coming from because the reason why I'm asking is I got I gotta have this view of fighting games that you know I I want to like them because they have all the characters they have the bombastic action they have all the personality and everything but it always requires you to be really technical about everything and never tells you how to do anything. <laughs> well, no, they, really? do have a, they do have a training mode that shows you how to do certain combos and No, 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 no. We need... I'm talking like, I, I don't want... Oh, he press these buttons. Now you're good tutorial. at this. I, I need an actual legitimate tutorial thing. Like, what what would you recommend of the fighting games that you've played for someone who... Really? Because usually the training modes nowadays do have a tutorial that gets you at least a five or ten combo. But th- no, that you're missing the point. You're missing the point. The point is not... Well, tell me what these combos are. The point is, teach me how to play a fighting game. Because th- there's a big difference between what th- what combo buttons do I press versus how do I play a fighting game. Mm. Ha- have you ever experienced any any decent fighters that have actually, that you feel have kind of delivered on that without forcing me to go online and see, oh, this person says you got to do all of this and... I don't know, like like online scrub tutorials, because I, I kind of want to actually like a game before I go get invested in watching all these online videos. Well, I mean, I know besides the combos, the training mode does tell you the very basics on how to throw a light punch, light kick, down kick, uh, uh, that how uh, doing a down crouching block uh, will won't prevent. Uh, will prevent you from being thrown, but won't prevent an upper attack and stuff but, like but, that. But, I mean, it, it sounds like a lot of this is just a little bit arbitrary, not necessarily super contextual. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of asking... I mean, all I, the only thing I could think of is strategy guides outside of that. I don't know. I feel like I got a, de- I got a decent grasp for how the Dead or Alive series works from uh, some, of the, some, some of the games in that series, like Dead or Alive 4, but... It's been so long that I'm not really sure if there's a tutorial or if I guess to learn through button mashing. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair I certainly le- I certainly uh, know Dead or Alive Five better than I know Virtual Fighter or Tekken or Street Fighter or King of Fighters or pretty much any other fighting game aside from Smash Brothers. Anyway, I'll I'll mention this other thing. One of the odd things they're doing is besides having the story mode come out and the the rest of the story mode come out in July. Is it has you know no arcade mode or anything like that, but all the rest of the DLC can either be paid DLC or you can grind by getting fight money in the online game. To they're making a mobile buy game. DLC. Yeah, they're basically making it like a mobile game. It's, <laughs> it's what they call fee to pay, or you're paying for a full price game and then getting all the wait, DLC. Wait, 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 wait. Ah. What, what did you just say? They call it what? Yeah, like uh, when you watch Jim Sterling, he calls it fee to pay. Okay, so that's what Jim uh, Sterling calls it, not what Cat calls it. Yeah, no, they no. probably have fee, some BS name fee for it. Fee to pay, because, you know, you're, it's not a free-to-play game. You paid full price for the game, but you're still having to being forced to either grind to get the items you need or pay in cash. Mm. Okay, I mean, that's that's not the worst thing in the world to have as long as things are somewhat rational. I know a lot of... E- like, like EA sports games got crap back in the day whenever they started pulling that stuff in the really early days of DLC. It's, it's I can see why Capcom does it. It still feels kind of scuzzy, especially mm. with a fighting game of all things. Yeah. But I, I, I kind of don't expect better from companies anymore. Aw. What about Atlas. Atlas is crazy. The logic of man does not apply to them. Atlas is awesome. Anyway, uh, we'll uh, keep this going. Uh, the other thing I did is I went with my brother and sister and yes. future sister in law and saw Deadpool this morning. Has, has anybody else uh, watched Deadpool? I watched it. Oh, the watched very first, The very first seven o'clock showing on 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 Thursday night. Oh. Before, Look at before you. the Friday official opening. I'm a pretty big Deadpool fan. So, yeah. I am a I am a slightly okay Deadpool fan that enjoyed this movie. Have you read any of the comics, GX? Have you read his I, original '90s series? Why Why would I have read any comics from the '90s? Hey, his '90s series ain't bad. It was I, the era of belt buckles. Everybody <clears throat> had to have a belt buckle. 
Yeah, but I, the Deadpool comics weren't bad. I Tons started reading Deadpool. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I guess the series started a couple years ago. The one that started <laughs> where he had to murder all the presidents. Oh, yeah, that, that that's the latest one. Yeah. I think it's the latest one. I don't know. That, that, I, or no, wait, it was the one before this one, the one that's currently going, because Marvel keeps freaking rebooting all of its goddamn series. I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> yeah, without going into spoilers or anything, I did like how they mixed in the scenes of uh, the main action that you wanted to see <clears throat> in, in between all the origin of, uh, you know, how he came to be as well. It, it didn't, uh, just have all the origin story up front and then get to the action. It, allow- it allowed it to have a nicer pace, I thought. Yeah, oh. it would be hard to have it otherwise, just because the beginning stuff is funny, but it's not the same kind of funny. Mm. All right. And I, I do love how they uh, portrayed Colossus in this. He's he's almost like a cartoonish <laughs> character. He's, he's a, he's His a nice voice toy for is a very... Man. Yeah, he's... He is more Boy Scout than Captain America and Superman combined in this movie. I have a question. Have do any of you know who teenage uh, Negasonic? Do, do any of you know who te- who teenage Negasonic? Fucking, I mean, freaking. I know who do, the you're <laughs> Negasonic about. That is a, Do any of you know what what she did in the comics? Uh, she's uh, a, it, she existed and then was part of X Men events. The end. Yeah, well, she's a very new character, I believe, a fairly new character in the. Um, well, it depends on what you uh, new. She's games. already she she died a while ago, <laughs> in the comics. Like I read her wiki entry a year, uh, when I first heard she was in it, and she like did this minor thing on Genosha, and then Genosha got blown up and she died, and that's it. Oh, it's weird because her power is kind of <laughs> blowing up to begin with. Yeah, like she didn't, she didn't, she wasn't nearly as prominent as in X Men as she was in that Deadpool movie. <laughs> but I she did say have one thing: it, this almost feels like a more faithful adaptation to the comics in some ways than oh. previous X Men, you know, movies. Because not only do you have a Colossus who plays a lot more like and looks a lot more like Colossus, but then um, with Negasonic, she's a trainee in this, and when she takes off her coat and everything she's got the yellow and black underneath of the you know the new mutant slash trainee uniform this is, this, is a, this is an awesome adaptation of the movies because like um of the comics because it's like they took the, the some some storylines and ideas from the, from the very first deadpool series which by the way is is a is a good read and actually has a pretty nice arc style for the 90s very very cartoony but they took they took that they took some of the drama they took some of the comedy they took some of the characters and they combined it with the more bon- bombastic comedy and fourth wall breaking stuff of the modern Deadpool comics of the last decade and that mix just works so well and it just this 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 is probably the most authentic one of the most authentic um, interpretations of a comic book character that I have seen in movies in in years. Look, I'm just I'm just holding out for the Squirrel Girl movie. Oh, please, please Marvel. <laughs> Squirrel Girl, Squirrel Girl, Howard the Duck. Yeah, plus please. The, <laughs> the uh they basically made like three or four genres of into one on this movie. It's a it's a violent action f- superhero flick, then it's a, also a, a, a vulgar romantic comedy at the same time. And it's a ger- generic 90s action movie. <laughs> <laughs> kind it's of, kind yeah. of funny that beneath the, beneath the, all that comedy and fourth wall breaking and Ryan, Ryan Reynolds is the most generic storyline with the most generic villain that you could have possibly done. <laughs> and somehow because of Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds and all those awesome little touches, it just works so well. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, and they're super aware of that Yes. Sort of chemistry too. They they play with oh. that. Oh well, yeah, that's that's pretty much. It. <laughs> now, did De- you guys pretty much encompassed in me saying because of Deadpool? Without <laughs> giving anything Deadpool away, did you guys up. stay for the end credits? Yes. I, I stayed for the end credits. <laughs> okay. It it was funny. It was exactly. It, it is the thing that you would expect him to do based on everything else that happened in the movie. Bueller. <laughs> um, I I guess 
I was very happy. I was also extremely worried whenever I I was first seeing things. I specifically kept away from a lot of the preview coverage just because I didn't want to. I I just didn't want to kind of not spoil myself, but I I didn't want to overindulge and then either build hype or build something that I wasn't going to expect or just kind of get sick of what it was before I actually got to enjoy what it was supposed to be. I will say this. I was so adept at um, absorbing all of the trailers and everything for these movies that it did kind of ruin a lot of the movie's jokes for me. Like, because I, I knew they were coming. They were still funny. It was nice seeing them in context. But they were all, I had already seen them, like, several times in these trailers on YouTube. So it was very smart to stay away from that stuff. So unless unless we're going to move on, I do have a small sort of contextual question because I don't follow the Marvel comic stuff Monster. super closely. Right. Uh, I, I get Squirrel Girl. I, I keep pushing myself to pit- hey, hey, one step at a time. <laughs> one step at a time. Um, I, I Basically what I've heard is that they kind of nuked some of the X-Men slash um, Fantastic Four stuff in the comic itself because of how sit, how um, Fox has been kind of tackling that stuff. Like, like in hopes right. that they can probably take it down so that they can get that stuff back. Oh, I... How, how, how do you think... Has there been well, they haven't kind of really any... been... They haven't been patting down Deadpool at all. Deadpool's got oh, like what was your question titles. Was that's, that's actually my question. Like, how, how have they kind of... Um, has there been any sort of reaction to this movie or the stuff coming up well, or any re- like have they acknowledged it? Have they done anything with it? Have they well, well considering re- regarding, uh, what, regarding what what you're asking, they um what, when the Deadpool movie was being when the Deadpool comic book was being canceled last year, kind of in the sort of in the months leading up to the big Marvel reboot, everyone was saying, oh, that's because they have a Deadpool movie coming next year. But then like. Late late last year, they get they launched another Deadpool comic book. They they have uh, they have like another spin off some other spin off Deadpool comic books running. So I mean I, they seem to be going full steam with Deadpool right now. So I'm not sure if if um, there's really a whole lot of uh, credence behind those rumors that Deadpool somehow trying to hurt Fox because a comic book sells like maybe. 30, 50,000 Unix, unless it's a really huge title like Batman or Superman. I'm staring at a Marvel Collector's Core Deadpool box, which arrived today. So, you know, there you go there. I mean, mean, ultimately, you talk about mobile games. I mean, comic books uh, and stuff stuff along those lines are the ultimate whale's market. Hmm. I, I okay that that that's got no reaction. <laughs> I, I, I uh, d- you didn't deliver it in a uh, in, in an effective way, I think, because I I kind of missed what you were saying. Then by the time I was paying attention, you were saying whales market, and I was just okay. <laughs> I, you, you know, you know, mobile games. The idea is you have your whales, the people who spend the obscene amount, of, the, the small group that spends the obscene amount of money on. Oh, Small that's things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the yeah, comic like industry expensive. basically has to live off of those, you know, kind of <laughs> yeah. people. If they didn't buy all their books, they, they wouldn't have anything. I only buy three Marvel books, Squirrel Girl, Howard the Duck, and Deadpool. And I was buying Spider-Man until they blew up their universe, and I guess lost interest because reboots, as, ever, as, ever, as any longtime listener knows, annoy me. Outside of Sonic, I haven't picked up too many superhero books as of late. Well, I haven't picked up too many Sonic books as of late, and we'll talk yes. about that. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, um, what's, what's been going on with that Sonic? Um, I did pick up Amazing Spider... Well, not Amazing Spider-Man, but Spider-Man number one with... Um, what's his name? <gasps> Miles Mar- Morales. Miles Morales, yeah. I need, a, I need to read that. Uh, fighting I, Blackheart I, with uh, Avengers all knocked out, and he's the man... That, <laughs> He's the kid who ends up uh, defeating Blackheart. And he... Yes, really wants to get started with Sonic, I think. Yeah, I, 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 I like, can deliver you the uh, perfect okay, segue. Okay. And, and but we have to... I was going to save that follow... for the end, but and if GX, you want to save that... We have to follow the list. And the list says we're starting with the long-lost prototype of an arcade Sonic game. 
Hey, like, and that's how we lead into comic it. Books. I I bet there have been some lost comic books before. I wonder hey. if Sonic has yeah. been lost. Josh. Arcade games. We're talking about the long lost prototype of a Sonic game called Sega Sonic Brothers. I have lost control of the show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just following your list. I'm That's, enforcing okay, your Okay, yeah. You're, you're, I, I haven't lost control of anything. I'm helping you. <laughs> That's true, because uh, apparently uh, an arcade board collector whose name is Showtime found an <laughs> old uh, prototype of a Sega Sonic uh, uh, puzzle game by uh, the creator of Bubble Bobble, uh, Fukio Mitsuji. Which I had, posted, I had no idea. And nobody no. had any idea. It's been 24 years and nobody had an idea this game existed. No, I mean, uh, that was created by the Bubble Bobble creator. That's a pretty big get for Sega. But yeah, well, uh, well, he's done different uh, puzzle games, you know, like Bust, Bust a Move and that. Yeah. But, well, um, is Bubble Bobble the same thing as Bust a Move? No, it's very, oh no, it's very different. Yeah. Bubble Bobble, you play as two little dinosaurs, and you blow bubbles to get, to trap your enemies, and then you pop them. And bust a move. I thought that was, bust, bust move was a like move, an alternate bust thing. Bust a move. You're is shooting an arrow into uh with with the bubbles in it that are like bubbles, like red, gr- green, and yellow. Does it still involve a green and dinosaur? It, <laughs> a dinosaur turns they, the little handle, but that's about it. They are canonically linked. Ah, I see. Okay, they're, I guess that's why I was confused. They're only canonically too. linked, but they ve- they play very, very differently. And it, apparently it's, like, it's also it's a like song from the young MC. It's like the difference between Street Fighter and Puzzle Fighter. They even, no, even <laughs> more so. It's the difference between, like, Streets of Rage and Street Fighter. <laughs> I'd say about that. Okay, because well, the one is not a puzzle game. It's an action platform. Not quite action platform, but action uh, game. Whatever. Anyway, um, so this guy, uh, they did prototypes. They tested they tested it out at different markets, and they d- it didn't test well at all. The, the pro- mm. uh, main problem was it was too hard. There would be a time where you'd get, if you messed up just like once, it was pretty much the end of the game. It was really hard to come back from it if you just messed up even why, once. Why is Sonic red and Sonic yellow? Are they are they the Sonic brothers? I, I don't get this game. I don't like it. <laughs> Clearly, all those Sonic recolors that everyone has ever made are canon. Right. Yeah, but I think they didn't even name these characters. I think they just wanted Yellow Sonic and Red Sonic. And no, actually... I'm, I'm sure that it's Sonya and uh, Yellow Manic. Anyway, there's a uh, so- there's even a song about the game about the game that existed back then. I'll play at the end of the show that I guess really? was in the arcade game itself. Wow, I'm afraid it has a, it has a song in it. Yeah, basically Damn, the I'm game is a. <laughs> Is a takeoff of another game that came out later called, or it was it was a predecessor to another game called Cleopatra's Fortune, which I guess you could find online, where you have to uh, cover your enemies' blocks in order to make them disappear. It, Something it kinda... to that effect. But there's there, if you look on Sonic Stadium, you can see we got screenshots from the uh, both the title screen and a little bit of gameplay, including the tutorial and stuff. So this it was a, be... this was pretty much a full blown already done game. That since it kind of failed in test marketing, they just they just hid away and nobody knew about it for 24 years, and that's pretty amazing, I think. My my interpretation of it kind of reminded me of like the Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles mini games, where the goal was to just entrap, like basically use one color to entrap another color to turn them into some sort of usable points. Is it is that mm. about accurate? I think that's I think that's close to what you're talking about. But again, uh, we haven't seen this game in play yet. He's he's just taken a bunch of screenshots of the game uh, during play, but he never took any video of it. So we I, don't I'm really get a good idea of what it looks like. I I'm, mean, wonder, how, I'm wondering how, what the controls are like. How it's placed. Well, I imagine it's just one joystick and one or two buttons at the moment. I mean, uh, hopefully, because, like, you know, uh, Sega Sonic Arcade uses a trackball, which is the only reason why that hasn't had some sort of release in a compilation. Well, yet. there are a lot of people, including myself, I ha- hate to admit it, <laughs> thought it was a prototype for the, originally thought it was a prototype for Sonic and Arcade before we found out it was admit, a puzzle game I am happy to admit that I did not fall into that trap because I saw those palm trees in the background that looked like they were from Sonic 1 
<laughs> yeah, well, I, well, I saw Red Sonic and Yellow Sonic. My brain went to Mighty and Ray. They here. do look Red like a and proto Yellow. Mighty and and the and the proto uh, uh, the the other one, Ray. Yeah. Something about those three colors and Sega in the arcade. So, so I guess the the bigger, more important question is: Will Sega like, release this to the public? Oh hell no. <laughs> no, the but more, I mean, the they more important the question, compilation. It's a you know it's a puzzle game, so the chances are somebody out there who, if they if they actually capture video of this so we could see what it looks like in action, could probably make a prototype version of that same game. The okay, more I'm, I'm important sorry, question yeah. flash, is you know, flash game. <laughs> more important question is when when is he going to rip that board? When is he going to rip that board? Put it online. Get on Mame. Yeah, There's that's another game. reason why I'm hoping this game uses normal controls and not a trackball shit, because then it can actually be controlled properly. Yeah, when am I going to get to play my Sonic popcorn game that feeds me popcorn out of my PC? Yeah! Give me Waku Waku Sonic Police Car! <laughs> yeah. Give me some I, I, like I say on the popcorn machine, I love the way Robotnik runs like a ballet dancer doing the whole thing. It's glorious. This this has uh, really made me want to get my Sega Sonic arcade board into an actual arcade machine. I've been trying to get that, get that done for months, but no, I can't find anybody who does stuff like that, and it's annoying because it's the internet. But I'm working with somebody with, with another staff member on Sonic Stadium who also owns a, a version of the board, and hopefully we'll we'll find somebody maybe get those games at some events for people to play. All right, and in other news, uh, the Sonic movie has been delayed to 2008, and after... Hey! 2008, <laughs> yeah. that means it's gone, it's gone so, back to 2018. Time, and we've already gone through all the horribleness, and now we can just forget about it. Yeah, it was, call, it was called the thing. Sonic Unleashed in show scene. <laughs> but basically, I'm at 2018, which is two years from now. God. And surprisingly, the announcement of the delay is the first time, like, half the internet realized there's a Sonic movie coming out. Uh, why can't now, everybody just forget about it? Why? This is going to be horrible. Yeah, it, well... Yeah, I mean, no. okay, I, I guess if they can make a good Lego movie, they can make a good Sonic movie. This is exactly but, what we were talking about on Spin Dash a little but bit. But who <laughs> is behind the Sonic movie? That's what I want to know. It's the director <laughs> of the Smurfs. Oh! <laughs> the Smurfs, you know, the Smurfs 2, to be the exact. Only, the Smurfs isn't the only bad movie that guy has directed. Um, fa- Smurfs, it was Smurfs 2, right? 2 to let be me, honest. Let me look this up. I'm looking this up right now as you guys... Now, just, now... Just, my my our, my devil's advocate argument on this yeah. was recalling that a movie is a Raja bad Raja. movie yeah. is made by many many people a good movie is a miracle of many many people coming together in sync okay okay well this guy let's let's look at this guy's director list <laughs> Film, uh, filmography okay uh never a uh, home alone 3 uh, was uh, his directorial debut, oh, followed by uh, Never uh, Big Kiss, which I've never heard of, Big uh, Mama's House. Oh, God. Oh, God. Scooby wait, Doo. wait, wait. Oh, <laughs> Scooby-Doo wait. 2, Monsters Unleashed, the, Your the Mine second Mars, <laughs> and uh, he, get a this, Beverly Hills Chihuahua, The oh, Smurfs, God. Oh, God. and The Smurfs 2. It just keeps getting worse. <laughs> Stop! Stop talking. Worse, and now you know what's coming after the Smurfs too. You know what's coming after that? Sonic the Hedgehog. Here, okay, here. <laughs> okay, this. So this, what what's actually worrying me about this is not. Okay, it's at this point it's obvious why they picked him. It's because he's probably had experience with doing the combined. CG plus live action stuff like that. That is clearly the reason. An- had to, he had to animate that Chihuahua. <laughs> it, it's just, it's not a good track record. Even any of those, any of those movies that have the combined, like silly CG plus live action or whatever tone they're going to take with it is just, it, it's not. It hasn't been a good Garfield. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, the Brock oh. Bullwinkle. 
Um, uh, let me see. Uh, I can't uh, remember uh, uh, Bullwinkle. I remembered seeing it when I was a child and stupid and liked everything. <laughs> It was was there anything to Rocky and Bullwinkle, or was that terrible? I was I, I've heard it was terrible. I've seen the pics of it. It doesn't didn't seem very good to me while I was watching it. So yeah, probably. And uh, let's see what what else what else has there been? Uh, hmm. So so I get the the point I'm really trying to make here is too. <laughs> a lot of the, a lot of those movies aren't necessarily bad because of their directing the problem is usually laid within the premise and the writing uh, at least we can probably agree on that right yes i mean like Gar- let's go let's go let's go to, back to garfield yeah this this cartoony cat who was orange and car- and uh, looked completely out of place in this world of bland humans and the, the movie it just had no identity it had bad humor it had no uh, it had no idea what what made the original Garfield stuff work, and um, th- that's what tends to define these kinds of licensed CGI movies. Because a, a movie that's half CGI and half live action isn't doing that for an artistic reason. It's doing that because animating live action character, uh, animating CG characters in a live action world is cheaper than full animation. That's why they've done it with movies like Garfield and the Smurfs, because it's cheaper. That's why they, they did it with Transformers. Like the Mike, Michael Bay said, they made a home movie that looked like the opening of Transformers 3. It would be much, much more expensive. Now, of course, the, the, the answer to that is to not make your robots look so goddamn overly complicated and ugly and make something cheaper and, and, uh, more, and more easy to animate, <laughs> but I, I digress. <laughs> So, so I, I guess, fo- following your train of logic, does this make you worry about how they may design Sonic in this? Yes! He's going to be monstrous! That, or he's going to look out of place. Either way, it's not going to be good. <laughs> because they're going to have to try to make this big, cartoony hedgehog with this huge Yuna eye that has two irises work... Next to uh, next to um, uh, uh, um, uh, Tom Cruise or Mel Gibson, and I'm showing my age. <laughs> I'm <What>? showing my. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those are the two leagues of the upcoming Sonic movie. I I love how those are your top pulls for no, the no, Sonic my, my movie. No, no, my top choice. My top choice was Don was was uh, Dom DeLuise. That was my top choice. The Dom DeLuise is dead. You might as well say Bob know. Hoskins. That, that's why I. That's why I shut, went over to the to uh, to Tom Cruise and Mel Gibson. <laughs> I'm showing my age here. I guess. Right. Oh, okay. I, I got it. Keanu Reeves. Okay. Yes. 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 I will buy that completely. It, it was really good in John Wick. If it's if it's going to be a train wreck, I think Keanu Reeves should absolutely be attached to it. Hey, hey, he he has been in good movies like John Wick, and I'm sure probably something else. And Bill and Ted. Oh, all right, okay, I'll give you that one. That that was a '90s movie, wasn't what was, it? What, had guys what's the name of the the fat guy who played Curly in the late in the last Three Stooges movie? He's in a he's in that TV show, or he's a cop, a comedian. Um, you have to be more specific than that. Um. A TV show with a fat cop. Uh, let me think. It's a romantic comedy. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Paul Blart. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You can be I admit Paul that was that was in my head because he's a fat and he's he's fat and he's a cop. But um, I have never I, I seen that. I only know it from commercials, and no one will believe me now that I've said that. I <laughs> haven't seen it either, for the record. But I I I, uh, I have gotten some stuff on it on Twitter for some reason. Now I will tell you, uh, I, I might actually have to do some research before <clears throat> we start hearing more about this movie. Uh, my sister, for Christmas, because because she knows I am a jackass and <laughs> we jackass all know that actually, yeah. Uh, she got me a copy of Smurfs 2 on <laughs> Oh my god. I, to be fair, 
I was actually pretty happy about it. And do you want to know why I was happy about it? It had a good Christmas special. No. Okay. Because Smurfs 2 features the voice of John Oliver. Isn't, and he, isn't he just in it for like five seconds? He is in it for five seconds. And um, all throughout uh, his Bugle podcast around that time, <laughs> yeah. they, they made that the entire running gag of... <laughs> He was the Smurf, and uh, just just look at how much that with, money. Of course, it's a great movie because look how much money it made. <laughs> with the way he no. was talking about, it, I almost wanted to see those movies because I was given the impression that he played a larger part in it. Thankfully, before that happened, I watched the Nostalgia Critic review, <laughs> where they uh, I, apparently they just brought in a bunch of major actors to grunt and say three lines. Yeah. Okay, it's Will Sasso who's uh, who was uh, I was thinking of. All right, do we have? He's bald. Writer? He's fat. He's a uh, well, well known enough. I think he could be uh, Robotnik. Oh, I know. Mal- um, not Malcolm Reynolds. Nathan Fillion. Yes. I, I don't. I don't. Okay. The problem is, I don't think you can just have a fat Robotnik. Like, like <laughs> Robot Robotnik isn't necessarily. Fat person. He has weird proportions. Well, like, he has cartoony proportions, <laughs> where his he, fat he, somehow concentrates in a weird, in like the upper part of his body. But he, he's he still in fat. boom, his his proportions yeah. are in reverse. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in a lot of ways, he is the Eggman. He has teeny tiny legs. He has like stick <laughs> legs. God, my if my, if my dad was still alive, he could have played Eggman. He had this big old pregnant stomach and these tiny little skinny chicken legs but but, but um what was the name of, of the uh, guy who played the satyr in hercules uh danny devito yeah well, there's a movement to get him to play the pikachu and detective pikachu he he he's been in that robotnik uh he's been in the, like that fake sonic movie trailer the like movie poster like he reads and stuff he, and, um, he doesn't pull off an awful robotnik per did, se did you did you just call him Pikachu? Um, I, uh, I I guess I said that too quickly. I said that there's a petition to get him in detective. To get yeah, him the, in Danny DeVito's like 60-something, though, right now. So I don't know oh, if that works. Oh, can be old. There's nothing saying that he can't be old. Gargamel was old-ish in the Smurfs movie, I think. Well, you know, yeah, like, the one thing I'll stuff. say about the Smurfs movie, the one thing I'll say positive is I think Hank Kazaria was good casting as... Gargamel. He looked like Gargamel. I, I guess, but he um, going by again when I saw the Nostalgia Critic movie because I've never actually seen the actual movie because I no, have I've only seen the um, Nostalgia Critic reviews. But, um, I mean, I mean, let's let's be honest. We're we're all talking about the responses to this type of thing from a standpoint yes. that you know we uh, like we like Sonic and we kind of want other people to like Sonic as well. I know, and it's I, really I, hard whenever we know that this kind of legacy is going to be attached to Sonic and it makes us any of us, all of us and any of us can weather the storm of just a bad Sonic piece of Uh, media being out there. It's just that we also have My parents know I write for like a Sonic site and stuff. I I can already picture them saying, so that's Sonic, huh? In 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 that awful trailer there? Well, here, yes. I, I, I'm, here's the problem. I'm not afraid of the. I'm not afraid of the Sonic fans or of the parents and stuff, because parents always going to be parents. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm afraid of the general media who already loves to have a field day with uh, Sonic bad everything that this comes out and it's like I, well, I don't I, I don't want to deal with the with the larger games media backlash to this. I, I, oh. Well, ideally, the the backlash will be more along the lines of Smurfs and Garfield, where they, they took a quality thing and made it shit. Oh, no, 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 no. They no, took no, no. a shit you, thing and they made it you, shit. You don't understand the <laughs> I game. I cross my fingers. Perspective on Sonic, if you're saying, oh, they take a good thing and made I it say, bad. I, I said ideally. I didn't. I, like, yeah. I, I'm being an idealist right now. I'm being that, a Bernie Sanders supporter right now. That's what I'm being. A Bernie that's Sanders not, supporter. That, that is not being an idealist. That's being naive to reality. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
again, Bernie Sanders supporter. <laughs> God, so many people are going to hate me after this. <laughs> uh, you got to love uh, Sonic's, uh, uh, the, the official Sonic Twitter, when they show a preview. Uh, they said they're going to show a preview of the movie, and it's a link to the Super Mario Brothers live-action movie. Oh, my God. Uh, YouTube <laughs> See, even Sonic knows that his movie's going to be shit if, if, if he's posting <laughs> action on Twitter. By, and, by, of course, by Sonic, I mean Aaron Weber. I, yeah, it, I I want to at least see what it's going to look like. I think the longer that they wait, the worse the response is going to get. I think I, I think they at least need to get a picture out to people. Oh no, they're going to get a picture out, and it's going to be this monstrosity of a Sonic the Hedgehog, well, that, and the hate is going to intensify. That, that, I'm just saying. Let's let's assume we're in fairy tale land where it's actually good. You the, called me naive. <laughs> I hey, I already called it a fairy tale land. I, <laughs> I, that, you, I, that, I, that doesn't play, absolve you of you even entertaining this this idea of a go on. I, I gotta play devil's advocate here, otherwise it's just a crap. Hey, let's crap on this movie fest. Oh, that's... But I, I I think if they actually do feel confident in what it is and what it's going to be, then the earlier they get it in front of people, the the better. Now at, at the um, very at the very least, it could at least inoculize inoculate people and get their bull crap out of the way hmm. before it actually starts coming out and before they actually start ramping up the advertising. I guess that's true, but I'm, I'm expecting some Sonic 06 level shit, shit to come out of this. Now, I do uh, I have a question. Hey, do we know... We don't talk about that in polite society. <laughs> do we know um, what uh, who, who's writing the movie? Someone on the Sonic Stadium forums, apparently. <laughs> well, we'll see. I haven't done any research into that, but... I I read all the forum posts. Well, not, I read all of his forum posts from the point where he started posting there. Again, I don't know if he's real or not. I, I, I used his quotes as a leaping point of discussion in the other podcast. Uh, I don't know. It, 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 it's, kind, it's kind of a nothing statement. Now, okay. I have a question. Did he indicate that this, this is going to be a dark and gritty reimagining Sonic the Hedgehog? I, I think he's specifically avoiding saying anything, but I think he's implying that it's not going to be gr dark, serious type stuff. I, I, okay, so we've there, escaped that hor hor horrifying chasm, at least. Because yeah. the only thing worse than a Smurf movie would be a dark, serious Sonic movie. Unless it's made by a fan for free on a website. Oh. Yes, yeah, I haven't actually seen that. I did not mean any offense to, to him or his work, which is far greater than anything I've ever accomplished. So uh, don't take offense to that. You can take offense to my Trump and Sanders comments, though. Because I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm an asshole. So, yeah, I mean, Mario had a movie. Sonic had a movie. GX now makes Sonic's been... to other things. <laughs> so, um... The only wanna... Sonic movie that counts comes in two parts on a VHS. And it was originally an uh, OVA in Japan. That's what I'm saying, an OVA in, from Japan. Yeah, which, ah. as far as I know, never got the actual release. But I, enjoy, you know, I will say, I enjoyed that as a teenager. Hey, you know what? If they decide to just make the Sonic movie a live-action version of the OVA, I'm all on board. All my yeah, chips on because that means that most of the characters would either be CGI yeah, yeah. or people in costumes. Give me and all things. of that. I want. I want Sarah with the cat ears and the cat tail fawning over Sonic. I want <laughs> Knuckles with the crazy hat. I want. I there want... has to be an addendum, though. We absolutely need Shadow the Hedgehog. No, we don't. Yes, we do. There I'm needs like... to be Shadow the Hedgehog. He needs to brood about his past. Were you tails <laughs> accidentally grabbing Sarah's boob? Yes, we also need that. So, oh man, that movie! Japan is weird. I, lo I love that. Mo I love that movie for all the wrong reasons. It's it's a it's a fantastic, weird, bizarre take on Sonic things. That's also somehow, in some ways, very accurate to the classic games, and in other ways, what what the hell? <laughs> but, but, you what, know what? The animation really isn't 
that bad for its era? No, it's great. It's so it's <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, it's it's funny. Funny. I'm I am i am I'm I'm just I'm shielding myself from you guys saying, Oh no, what are you talking about? That stuff is shit. Because like I <laughs> Like, that's, I'm, that's the same. I, as I really far as I know, that's the it's, same studio that did Sonic CD or stuff, didn't it? It, it, that, it looks, so. like looks like the same it. studio. Looks like it. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I enjoyed the. I really enjoyed the action scenes in that. I really and I, and I liked the, having Knuckles anime for the first time. I that really was. enjoyed the voice actors because the voice <laughs> actors in that. Oh one. man, I, I will never forget the line. Uh, oh, I, you have to be able to repeat it though. Hey, Knuckles, um, I'm Sonic's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> you mean tails, obviously. No, you know. Knuckles actually says that in there. Wait, what? Yeah. Wow. How did I not remember that line? Mm. That's hey, bullshit. Knuckles, you're just a rifle. I, you may know everything I'm going to do, but that but that doesn't help you because I know everything you're going to do. Strange, isn't it? And I, I admit, I do. It was. It is hilarious how the voice actor delivered that line. <laughs> uh, I, I gotta say, I, I, I. I I, I really, really miss uh, ADV, the, the, uh, but it kind of, kind of in today's market, it kind of proves that yeah, they probably did have to die based on. <laughs> yeah, a lot of anime companies had to die in the mid two thousands, unfortunately. No, I, I, no, I don't. I don't mean because of financial reasons. I mean. It is probably best that they don't exist anymore. <laughs> because, well, isn't it big argument making that point because they were pretty much localizing everything? Well, the thing <laughs> like ADV localized like like they had a really freaking weird library of stuff, <laughs> and the 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 best of their stuff was also because it was weird and because it wasn't dubbed super super great like. Azumanga Daio is probably their biggest thing, and that that series is super super weird. <laughs> and I, I the voicing is good, the writing is really oh wow really weird they, with it. It's uh, it's I I love it. I love it. It's and uh, speaking of ADV, ADV films, they also did Ghost Stories, <laughs> which was yeah. uh, which was which was pretty much like the fir- which was pretty much like the first abridged series except it was dubbed in its entirety and released officially on DVD. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's kind of the problem with 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 an, anime with anime localization companies in the mid 2000s. They were they, they were localizing everything at the time. They were just flooding the market. And they, had, pr- they gen- had a lot more freedom crap. than they didn't and they than uh, having the Japanese studio company like really Focusing on them and making sure they're doing it. Just yeah, right. like 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 with ghost stories, they pretty much just said, "Look, you can mess with certain cultural elements, and you can't change the characters' names. Aside from that, you can go nuts." Because this series did very poorly in Japan because it was super generic. Yeah, so <laughs> they, they, yeah, so they just let them do whatever they want. And they <laughs> it turned it into funny. a comedy. Like uh, it, it, Disco Tech is st- selling you right now. If you like, if you like vulgar, politically incorrect humor that makes fun of like gays and stuff and Christians, go out and buy Ghost Stories because it is it is great. Oh, uh, great. and don't don't get me started on Super Milk Chan. Oh, I love I love me some Super Milk Chan. And we are way off, and we, are, we and we are way off topic. By, topic, but I also want to mention Shin Chan since we're up Milk Chan. Well, Shin, <laughs> Shin Chan's like a com- well, it's not a completely different beast, but it is in the same. Oh, no, it's not even. They, in bo- the same. they both have Shan in the name. That's all I know. <laughs> well, back in the day, another good localization that completely changed what the original was about is Samurai Pizza Cats. If you've really? seen that. Huh. Yeah, well, I've I must even call it Samurai Pizza Cats in that. It's yeah, I, I uh, that is on my bucket list of things I need to buy. Did, was it, it is called on... Samurai Pizza Cats in Japan? No, no. no it had <laughs> nothing to do with pizza. It's just that you know. <laughs> so the they teenage, just injected. Pizza it was it was mid nineties. Ninja Turtles was they all the craze. They turtled them up. They so turtled they them added up Samurai. Oh, what what do kids and... like these days? They like pizza. Well, so they, they like, like Japanese Samurai. <laughs> They like the B. They like the B fifty twos. And it's one of those shows that didn't go by the original script when they localized it at all. They just <laughs> changed everything. Mm. Uh, yeah. Get, hey, weren't we uh, talking about a blue hedgehog? Right. Screw that. We're talking about <laughs> cats that deliver. Yeah, we, 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 can, we can totally talk about talk about anime for like the next of time. I don't care. Sonic, uh, Mario and Sonic releases on April eighth in Europe. Uh, no date for yeah. the U.S. 
Hopefully it's not like a Sonic Boom DVD situation where there's still no date for the U.S. Now, I, I and forget. it'll probably this is be the, released around the same time. Is this the Summer Olympics or Winter Olympics? Uh, We're back on Summer. Summer okay, Olympics. Summer. Uh, okay, this so I cannot is wait for... By, I cannot, it's for on. 3DS only from what I understand. I cannot wait for Shadow the Hedgehog to defeat everybody else in horseback racing. That's an Olympic thing, right? Horseback racing? If it isn't, oh, they, they've, yes. had, they've had they've had horseback before. racing, but you ha! are high because Styx is going to destroy him. No, Shadow followed yeah. closely by Charmy B. Shadow, you know, Shadow, Shadow Charmy B's going to go so freaking fast because he's because he's going to accidentally sting that poor horse until it either crosses the finish line or dies. By the way, with sticks in not only Mario and Sonic at the Olympics, but in Sonic Runners uh, cameoing in both, does this make her like an official Sega Sonic character? Or does she still count no. as just Sonic Boom only? I I, I think that they're just need, they just need more characters, and they're just bringing her back instead of lo- instead of resurrecting poor Fang, uh, Mighty, and Ray, and being. Uh, I I I mean I mean part of it I'm sure is to keep going with the um <clears throat> with the uh. Hey, hey, let's cross market and make sure people remember Sonic Boom exists. Yeah. And we we still have like Pardon entire me. rights to that and all the characters and everything to it. So let's let's not let's just keep that going because people need to know and people need to care. And it would not surprise me in the least if for whatever reason Japan had a positive opinion about this character. Now I have a dumb I have a dumb question that has not that has very little to do with anything on our news list. Do you guys think we're going to be getting a, a new Sonic Boom game on the big consoles anytime soon? Or uh, no, I think the like I said on Spin Dash, I think the reason for the delay on Fire and Ice is to put it out this year with the 25th anniversary, so we have a Sonic Boom game. So, for the 25th mm. anniversary. I I will answer that question with another question. I hell I hate when you do that. What do you think the NX is going to be? Well, I do love the idea of a console of a home console that that also has this a lot of cross compatibility with a portable, and that and that like comes with it in an optional SKU. So, well, whatever. I whatever, guess that hopefully. <laughs> yeah, what, whatever. To me, whatever answer you're going to have to that, it's going to be the answer to that. Um, although, to be honest, I think a lot of that's going to depend on. Hey, are we still doing all right with Sonic Boom toys and Sonic Boom cartoons? So you don't think they bring Sonic Boom to Xbox One, PS4? I don't. I don't think that they have a lot. Well, I'd be I, surprised if they didn't, because it's not like those consoles don't get other licensed games. If they did, it would be a. To me, I think it would be a real small. Yeah, game. I think. Like I think it would probably be on the scale the, of like a downloadable title. I think the fail of Rise of Lyric and Shattered Crystal from 2014 really affects any future Sonic console titles as far as Sonic Boom goes. I mean, hopefully mm-hmm. Fire and Ice is a huge improvement, and hopefully it has the sales it's you know looking for. But Rise of Lyric was such a huge sticker for them. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if that'll if they'll do another major Sonic Boom title outside of like 3DS games and mobile. I mean, mm-hmm. spe- speaking of disasters. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I gave you that, and your last segue was, speaking of Sonic, Mario and Sonic is coming. <laughs> speaking of disasters. I wasn't looking at the list. I apologize. Speaking <laughs> of disasters. I never read, I didn't read the last the last two. <laughs> Sega declares it's, a, well, I call it it's gambling app, Sonic Runners, a failure. Hey, I'm, That's not I'm, surprising. <laughs> first, first and foremost, I, I'm not. I'm not going to put up with that. I'm not going to put up with your editorial of, of it being a gambling app. <clears throat> because, well, first off, all Japanese. Well, not all. That's unfair. So many Japanese games are like that, and by my feeling thus far, I put about a good solid month of playing that day to day. Hmm. <clears throat> And I you do know when I call it that, it, I'm being ex- uh, exaggerating by quite a bit. Yeah, Jeff does not understand the concept of exaggeration. Here's the thing. 
You then went and made a comic about it. Yeah, but that was a pretty funny comic. And it got I, a lot I of haven't, attention. I haven't read it. I, I, I'm saying, if you're being pretend facetious, you're, you're having a hard part with the pretend part. Now, I'm not saying not calling it a gambling app is an exaggeration, but not too far, you know, off in a way. Well, what I, 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 uh... what I'm saying is, if you're playing and you're playing well, I, I think I spent one dollar on the game, and that was just to get rid of apps. And then I didn't spend anything. And it's true, I didn't get a lot of extra characters, but I was getting some characters that I like through the story. I was getting enough red char- red rings to get to just outright buy the characters I wanted. And then they made other characters that you could buy with red rings. They added the chaotic says, hey, you could just <sighs> buy these if you want. And if you continue to participate in, like, the daily events, if you continue to participate, they were handing out, like, 10, 20 rings, like, every day. Like, you could easily get a reasonable amount of red rings. So I, I think it's unfair, and ultimately, I also think that's probably why it did bad. <laughs> You think it did bad because it was giving players too many free things? I don't know, but a lot of that didn't come until later, in the, much later in the game. Like, I didn't even know about this being able to purchase the characters because I haven't really played the game much in the last five months or so. I, I admit it, I was I got completely, turned off so much by it. I was completely turned off by all the people who were saying that the game was incredibly unfair. and by the, Like, I saw these pictures on Twitter of just, like... A wall of bo- of ball spikes just covering the just covering an entire section of the screens. Like, <laughs> no, okay. Oh, yeah. I think once, I'm going to ignore this game. Once you get so, once you get like way into it, there there are things on it where I do feel, you know, this probably is going too fast to actually see what's coming ahead, and I I do have some small issue with that. But at the same time, I can still probably reasonably get like a. I guess like a three or four million game consistently with as much as I've played. <clears throat> hmm. Well, I think part of that though is also what characters you get. Like I didn't get good scores at all until nah, I got. No, nah, it's not. It. it I, I disagree. Like I didn't get good. I didn't get any kind of good scores until I got like Rouge the Bat and then uh, two particular buddies that I was able to bring in along, and all of a sudden I was getting like three, five. <laughs> Six million points. Where before I was lucky if I got a million. I have a question: Is this Sonic Run- is is this Sonic Runners comic from a uh, from, from from like an Archie promotional or something? It was actually from a it's actually from a Sonic Dash comic uh, promotion. Oh, and of course okay. I, I reworded it because that's my Tumblr blog is Sonic reworded, which I brought back. <laughs> oh yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, I, I, I've been meaning to take a look at that. So, yeah. I- um, I think oh. I think if you've been put off by the way that it has been monetized, I think it is probably worth maybe going back and trying it a little bit because they have put in things like I, I don't know how it was super super early, but they have stuff like hey you can get a mission every day that gets you a certain run, you get the daily bonus every day that gets a certain amount of things. Uh, they have like a daily competition where if you play um, the one minute challenge. Even just if you play it once, then it pits you against someone else uh, and you can see their score and they can see your score and you just kind of fight each other over score. And at the end of the day, uh, depending on how many win streaks you get, you get red rings, you get um, a free chow walker buddy, that kind of stuff. And it is a game that I think probably suffered from bad early press. I also think. I think ultimately, though, the problem is Sonic Dash is out. Like, hmm. they, they kind of had their mobile game with Sonic. And then they tried to have the Sonic Dash again. Yeah, and then there's Sonic Dash 2. And Sonic Dash 2, I think, is much more fair with its uh, in-game currency and how it, how it works. Well, not only that, but I, I think Sonic Runners is, like, a far better game. Once I actually got into it, got used to the controls and everything, I think uh, it's uh, great. The, the game... I think it's a lot less approachable, though, than any of the other, uh, like, any of the super simple Sonic Dash games, though. Well, that's the thing, is I I think the main game of Sonic Dash, I mean, of uh, Sonic Runners is just fine. I think it's really good. It's the, it's the you know, microtransaction market that it includes 
that and, I have the biggest problem with because everything's on a roulette wheel instead of just being able to pay for it outright. And it makes it so if you want a certain character and they're only available that month, there's a good uh, chance you won't be able to get that character. That annoys the hell out it, of me. Plus, plus there's some of the I, stuff. That, hold on, hold on. I don't think there's characters that are only available that month unless they're like holiday based characters. Like they had the Werehog on there for a while and they advertised, hey, we have the Werehog, but then they also advertised, hey, he has a higher catch rate until this date. But as far as I know, I don't think they removed anyone except for like the special holiday costume characters. Now, admittedly, it is kind of annoying that all that stuff is on a roulette, but at the same time, by saying you don't like that is basically along the same lines as saying, I don't like mobile games right now. Yeah, I don't really like mobile games all that much. Which is entirely fair, but I just think that... No, I mean, there's quite a few uh, free-to-play mobile games that I can play through that that I don't have a problem with. It's not just, you know, besides the uh, microtransactions, this... They've really managed to screw up that game when it first came out. I mean, th- th- for the longest time, it was building up the cash when it would update. Every time it would update, it wouldn't remove the previous update and the previous stuff that was in it. And so it would build and build. And at one point, I had two gigabytes of data actually, in my phone that was just Sonic Runners. <laughs> they actually that, have a uh, button on the home yeah, screen. Yeah, now they have, the, now they the have a button where you have to cl- <laughs> where you clear it out. They have a button to clear the cache. But they shouldn't even, that. like I said, they shouldn't even have that. You should be, it should automatically clear the cache on its own. But uh, also, it got, like I said, I was talking about that. If you get certain items and certain characters in a co- combined together, you can get a really, really big score. And it got to the point where people were getting such high scores that they were kicking well, them off the, <laughs> and uh, ex- exiting from about- the game because the the. They were getting too high scores, and they thought they were cheating. Yeah, that yeah, that's that's stupid. But I mean, that that's stupidity of their own device. Yes. I mean, I, as I a, mean like I said it before, as a main game, Sonic Runners is could be fun. When when I first started, I really loved it. But then as it went on, it just started hating it more and more, just because of all, uh, what they were doing, not only with the microtransactions, but yeah, it's the a mobile other game. stuff they were screwing up. Big time. It, 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 yeah, it but is it's, a mobile it's micro. Mobile I I played a lot of mobile games where the microtransactions were more a lot more fair than this. Like I'm saying, uh, Sonic Dash, Sonic Dash Two, Fallout, Dash. Fallout Ooh. Shelter. That that was my last mobile game obsession from January and uh, December and January. I off from like Sonic Dash Two at all. I, and, uh, I guess I'm just coming from this from a different perspective because I played it. Super early on, then I stopped. Then I saw that I guess I, I guess I started after they said they fixed. Oh well, we fixed the wall thing. It's like it's mm-hmm. been a while since I played it. I it's I for a while I thought, hey, we this this Sonic talk was going to be our games awards and stuff of the year. So I was like, oh, I better educate could, myself. Could be, you, could be you jumped <laughs> back in right when I probably jumped out <laughs> or around there. Potentially, or like slightly after. It, it, it's like I I like it. I find it something that I can recommend now. I'm not going to tell you, hey, I'm already tired of this type of gameplay. I'm not going to go and tell you, oh, you definitely need to pick it back up. But uh, it's worth checking out again if you are on the fence. <clears throat> All right, and with that, we're going to take a little break. But uh, I'm going to play some Sonic Jam at thegame.com. GX I'm and Reef have a little something to share with us in their little mini podcast, which will be right now, and then we'll be right back. Ooh. Hi, and welcome to the first ever episode of... Let's say it on three, okay? Okay. Okay, three, two... One. I don't. I don't know the name of this actually. It's it's the GX, the GX and Reef's Reef best, best Sonic, Sonic ever podcast, podcast ever show on the, on the internet, internet show. about show. I so. Yeah. What 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 we what we both said. Yeah. The thing that we both said. So so this is the show that is just going to talk about all those big important hot button Sonic issues that other Sonic podcasts are afraid to talk about, like. It, we're, we're talking, like, serious stuff here. I, I'm afraid right now to talk about it. Are you afraid, Reef? The Illuminati are coming for us. I, I, I sense that. Like, 
I, I got my traps set up. I got my alligator out on the front lawn. Unfortunately, I think he might be frozen because it's Pennsylvania over here and it is cold as sin. But, I, I mean, hey, it's just a visual deterrent there. It, I think that it will keep them away. You probably should have just gotten in an inflatable alligator. That I was not in the wherewithal to think of that at the time. Well, so, live and learn. So, what, what we're going to talk about on this first ever I- episode is our favorite game from last year because we never got to talk about that from before. So let's talk about it now. Woo! And, uh, Reef, do you want to tell us what your favorite Sonic game from last year was? My favorite Sonic game from last year was Splatoon. That That is a good Sonic game. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think it supports that, that the Amiibo, right? The Amiibos? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. They have one of those of Sonic. Who's your favorite Sonic character in Splatoon? Um, the girl with the tentacle hair, because she's got tentacle hair and it looks cool. She is a Sonic-ass Sonic character. She turns into a squid, and there are lots of squids in Sonic, probably. Yes. Like that one game, Sonic and the Squid Knight. I I think... I I was thinking of Sonic and the Squid Knight. I'm glad we were on the same wavelength on that. I think that was on the N-Gage. I... I No, no. It was on the Neo Geo Pocket. Uh, I, I get those two confused. Yeah, they were equally worthless. So, so... As you can, as you might remember, last year my favorite Sonic game was Amy Rose and Rouge Beach Volleyball, it, the LCD game from McDonald's. Yes, yes. And the year before that, it was Amy Rose and Rouge LCD Beach Volleyball Volleyball from McDonald's. Right. This year, I'm going to throw it for a bit of a loop. It is not Amy Rose and Rouge Beach Volleyball LCD game from McDonald's Happy Meal. You are full of crap, sir. I, and, no, I have a good reason here. L- listen to this. I'm listen ready. To, this better this. be good. I have clicked this game on. It is not lighting up. It is not making sounds. It is doing nothing. Did you change the batteries? That's the thing. This, this is where the game's fatal flaw is. You see, like most McDonald's toys, it has those dumb little triangle screws on the back. No, oh, throw it in the trash. Set it no, on fire first. I, no, 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 no. I'm going to be kind to it. But it's just not top slot territory. So this year, you'll notice, that is the sound of a working game. So this year, I absolutely have to give my top spot to the Billy Hatcher LCD Happy Meal game. Well, I definitely cannot fault you for that, good sir. It is a game. It has two buttons. Both of them function. It lights up. It makes sounds. I mean, and it comes in a Happy Meal. It, it, it's right in the name. It makes yeah, you happy. You, you you don't get a sad meal. You don't get a Burger King, for crying out loud. Now, they got the, they got the kids club over there. You know what I'm not? I am not a kid anymore. I'm not even a big kid. You're not even a club. And not none of their... Ad- they don't have the adult meal that comes with the toy. They, <laughs> McDonald's, I go there. They don't judge. They say, hey, hey this, this guy seems like he's happy. He needs a happy meal. It comes with a toy. And sometimes they say, hey, this guy's sad. He needs cheering up. Give him a happy meal. It's right in the title. So, GX and Reef podcast show on the sonic internet prizes go to the splatoon and the billy hatcher lcd game i might there might be like a big upset next year if i can get one of those triangle screwdrivers and a replacement battery but until then those are your 2015 games of the effing year and don't you forget it so until next time this is gx and reefs podcast internet show on the internet about sonic the internet and, and we're back i, oh, I love this guys this, that was that was that, that really was the best podcast i feel physically uncomfortable right now <laughs> i i played sonic jam on the game Come for about five minutes and you talk about and G- GX, during the break, you talked about enduring Sonic Jump. You haven't endured anything until you've tried to play this game. 
I, no, it, it, it makes I, me phys- I, I feel physically ill. Sonic Jam and the GameCon makes me feel physically ill. And I'm not even exaggerating. I feel genuinely uncomfortable right now. <laughs> From... I, I, I would like to think of that's because of what the you're so blown away in awe by the best podcast ever. I, I yes, yes, that thing between you and that other guy was okay-ish, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, it was okay. It has nothing on the Atari Lynx, unfortunately, but it was far better than the GameCom. I think you get more of GX and Doc, Evil Dr. Reef on the spindash.com. And on Oh, this no, it's called Never Shut Up. Sorry. Forever. Forever. GX, you are failing at being creepy. And on our final uh, topic, we've been having serious delays with the Sonic comics as of late. Yes. In fact, the Valentine's issue, which has uh, Sonic being chased by a bunch of the girls from the canon with Omega shooting Cupid arrows at them, it won't be this won't be out until May now. Oh my <laughs> Perfect. gosh! Wow. We are seeing about a three month delay on Archie Comics. There's, and to be honest, there has been a, a delays also on certain other Archie books. I think uh, oh, lots Archie of other and Archie Sabrina. Books. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, so it's been nasty. I've been wondering, you know, what's going down. I have a bad feeling that Archie's starting to, like, get, getting kind of low on cash mm. here. They seem to have been uh, not doing that great as of late. Um, well, I'm they sure did... they've been spending lots of capital on doing things like uh, the... The, that new that new Archie Comics television show Riverdale that Riverdale well, from the CW that, they, but I if, think I think that that actually makes them money because they get, get the it, license. For I'm that. sure it will in the long run, but I would, but they probably had to spend some money to produce the pilot. Yeah, right? Right. plus uh, the Maybe, hiring out know. Mark Wade to, to write the uh, new rebooted Archie Comics, Archie and the New Jughead. I get, which yeah, are much more realistic, shape. and if you ever seen like the old TV show Doby Gillis, it's kind of like that where he's talking to the audience. I haven't mean to read those because those it's, comics look so awesome. It's, but, they're great. Those are actually yeah. really, really good. If I really recommend those. Like I, I guess I've been content with Howard the Duck and Squirrel Girl and Deadpool and Invincible. But if you remember, sometime last year, um, they actually also were trying to get extra money through a Kickstarter. Lumberjanes. <laughs> to get more comics the uh archie comics out f- to uh walmart and target and that but once they found out the you know the independent comic book uh, retailers found out about that they made a huge fuss over it and eventually the kickstarter got canceled and i think the kickstarter they were probably relying heavily on for some of their cash intake that's po- mm. possibly why we haven't seen too many comics as of late and i but, prefer not to be too alarmist when it comes to stuff like this there's I a get- we should probably, I guess, we should probably be a little concerned, but there's a few production pickups happen. Yeah, that's that's very true. But there's there are some other things that have been making me like concerned. I mean, John Gray's Twitter. Yeah, which uh, I guess I'll get to on that first. If you've been uh, following that, I, what he could be talking about is just personal, his own personal business. Uh, that's you know, what that, it sounds like. Yeah, that's what it's it kind of reads so, like. So let, let's but he's clarify. Being a little like, cryptic what? about that. Let's clarify, like, what kind of stuff is going on? Um, basically, he's been talking about being, like, um, uh, he needs to, like, get out of an uncomfortable relationship, and you shouldn't burn bridges, but you should cordon them off. Uh, he had a so link that... where he was talking, uh, the, the, it was about a, f- a friend uh, said something about it, so he can relate to that, a friend that's leaving a major uh, comic book company, Marvel, and she's publishing her own independent comic. And he's been trying to get, uh, he's been kind of pushing Chip and Walter lately, so I'm wondering if any of that is any kind of a indication that maybe he's been, he's left Archie or anything. Even his, tw- even his uh, Twitter little, like, profile only mentions his work in IDW for I, Disney. I do believe the ex-Alex mentioned for a while, though. But I could, yeah, like I said, I could be completely wrong about this stuff. Plus, we have not only, like, the cancellation of Mega Man and Sonic Boom, which were very recent and close to each other. Then we have this. All of a sudden, we have this delay. We have delays, uh, huge delays of the graphic novels. We have um, the Bumble King, Ian Flynn's Bumble King forms, which is about as official for Archie Sonic as we got uh, closing down. So there's, I mean, it, 
it I could be wrong, but there's there's some like signs that uh, something bad's going down with the Archie Sonic, and I hope that's not the case. I hope it's just a yeah. Little, I just hope, I hope it's just a little hiccup, but you know, who knows? I I, I talk about this on uh, the TSS forums, but they they call me like a doomsayer and that. <laughs> Well, I mean, I admit this stuff uh, that it is kind of doomsday, but it's not. Com- but it's not completely it's miraculous. Doom mongering, I guess, is what they said. When, when, yeah, but I was. I, uh, um, but um, the the thing is, when, when, whenever companies begin, begin having issues like this, there often is some sort of underlying problem that the company just ref- just doesn't want to acknowledge, either because of contracts or because they they just don't like talking about the stuff publicly. Like, you know, like the Ken, whole Ken Penders thing. We were pretty much in the dark in regards to what the hell was going on there until the aftermath. And well, where let's, we let's... discovered that, oh, we're losing the continuity and the characters. Yeah, oh, one of the other things was, I guess, the uh, classic Archie is pretty much only in digest form right now. They don't have any of the <laughs> classic Archie or even, uh, what's his name, Kevin Keller issues right now. Well, let's... let's... Let's think for let's stop for a second and kind of break it down because there are many places where something could go wrong in the production of a comic book that could justify delays. It could yeah. be writing, it could be art, it could be printer, it could be printing services, it could be mailing services, it could be legal issues, it could be financial issues. And it could be any combination of those ones. There's just a lot of things that we kind of, we kind of don't have a good grip on. And the problem is, as far as I've ever seen, the comic book industry as it is 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 a pretty tenuous kind of go, going by the seat of their pants industry as it is. Like it's been kind of it's kind of strange that that this industry which has essentially become the sort of the, the center of the center of the source material for most of the major movies and television shows that we consume these days it is a little strange that the actual industry itself doesn't do very well the, pro- the problem is like well a lot of it has to do with just the difference between mediums the difference between availability the and stigma the stigma diff- of comic books there's still a stigma of comic books, which which honestly goes back decades and decades. Frederick and worth them. Yeah, I, I mean, for a lot of comic books for a long period of time, and Sonic included, are very heavy in the style of um, soap opera type drama. Mm. I mean, it, it, let's be honest, it, a lot of them still have that kind of issue. Yeah, yeah. But of course... That, yeah. I don't really read those kinds of comics anymore, so I'm a little disconnected from it. My guess is it is a financial thing, because it's not just affecting the Sonic comics themselves. It's been affecting all the, the entire Archie line that's not the main that's not the main new Archies. Mm. They've right. all had their serious delays. Currently. I mean, if they, if they can't get out the new the new Archie stuff that apparently I guess I I am under the impression people generally like, uh, then I, I think Sonic is certainly not the issue. I, it, I've always been kind of curious how Archie itself remains existent. And it has been kind of strange. And part of me has always chalked that up to, well, they have Sonic, and mm. that's, that's not nothing. Sonic has long been their top-selling comic, like right. even, even compared to their name-brand stuff like the old Archie stuff. Yeah, it seems like they've been trying though to make to push uh, like borders to try to get you know increased sales, not just with Kevin Keller, but with, like um, oh, Archie having a relationship, to... so, had a I... biracial relationship with the uh, with the one girl from Josie and the Pussycats. Well, well, they had the death I, of they I had the like afterlife bring... with Archie, death with Archie, death of like Archie. I would like to bring something to the surface that I was told by uh, Paul Kaminsky last year, which was that they are working on. Other comic books in the uh, so- in the uh, Ac- Archie action series that includes stuff like Sonic and Mega Man. But that wasn't well, Paul Kaminsky. I mean, that let's, let's also guy. be honest. Like, it, 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 until they kind of brought out this new Archie and Afterlife with Archie and the new Sabrina and that kind of stuff, a lot of what they were doing was so tied to like novelty stuff. 
like Archie meets uh, Kiss. Archie meets Kiss. Archie meets Predator. Arch- Archie versus the Sharknado. <laughs> Archie, yeah, that, that that kind of stuff. That I, I'm sure they did it for the sake of just. Hey, we need something out. We need something to grab attention. And I think, I think they're probably doing the right thing whenever they did do the big Archie stylistic reboot to grab attention. I just wonder if that has mainstaying power. If that really can get them out of the funk that they, that I perceived them to be in whenever they were doing the weird novelty crossover stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um... I I hope that stuff like Riverdale does bring them the kind of cash flow that they might need. But the problem I also well, see is money from a TV show isn't necessarily fast. It isn't necessarily direct, and it isn't necessarily good. We'll say certainly, but like holder. um, like R- Riverdale, it could be. It could be. Sabrina, you know, go on for go on for five, however many seasons Sabrina went on for, and then get an animated spinoff, or it could be like that Archie mystery series, which I think like got uh, one season and then quietly went away. <laughs> yeah, I've been hearing a lot of uh, or that Archie live action movie from. There's also been a lot of tension behind the scenes with some of the co-owners of the Archie comics franchise. Like, uh, I guess one of the there's a female uh, owner in that that's really been attacked. Uh, the the both the female and the two male owners have been attacking each other and going back and forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that, 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 that could screw up production. <laughs> um, but uh, have have you guys ever heard? It's been of a the, while since I read it, so I forget all the details. Have you ever so, heard of the Archie it. of the live of the direct to television Archie movie that took place like I think it was twenty years. After um, after after they all graduate high school. If you're asking, let let me answer that question with the following statement. If you're asking me, have you ever heard of blank involving Archie? The answer <laughs> is no. <laughs> but like, yeah, Riverdale could. For all we know, R- Riverdale could end up being something like that. Something that you have no idea what, what I'm even talking about because it's so super obscure. I barely even remember what I'm talking about because I read that Wikipedia entry like six months ago. Anything, <laughs> but like, anything I know about Archie is because I had someone in our Spin Dash comic chat room who adored Archie comics and that world of things. And anything I know is just kind of osmosed through that experience. Did you know that, that Archie died at the end of Life with Archie? Archie, as far as I know, like, Archie has died in a number of iterations <gasps> of his stories. Really? He has? I thought he only died once, or twice. I, I know that I know that um, mystery cartoon or whatever was, su- was, as it was described to me, sounded super frickin' weird. I heard it was <clears throat> weird, yeah, but I don't think he died in it i actually think he did die at some point and then came back as a zombie or something i don't know oh that, that, that doesn't count he's still walking around anyway here's hoping that you know archie comics get it says their act together and we still have uh our sonic comics you know later in the yeah. year not just the ones that have been basically those, finished those sonic comics have gotten me through some of that character's darkest times, and we're <laughs> going true. through one of those dark times. Well, okay, not, not this really, year, but we did, Sonic, la- Sonic we did last year when we didn't have a single. Uh, we didn't have a single. We uh, had we had Rodia, and we had Sonic Sonic Runners. Well, no, but we didn't have a single console Sonic. We only had with uh, two mobile games. Rodia was close enough, and the cartoon, <laughs> the cartoon show. Got, the cartoon's got good, but it's still got nothing on Ian Flynn's but run on the problems so- with the Archie. Uh, Archie's financial troubles right now is that Sonic is a license out to Sega, and mm. you know it, it could be the if they're not put, putting out you know product that could affect the art. You know, Sega's still staying with um, Archie. I yeah. agree with you to the point where. They have been with it so long. I kind of, I kind of look at it and think, if I were Sega in the situation, 
-hmm. as long as Archie is paying me for the licensing fee, I kind of don't give a damn. <laughs> like, I will, like, I, I, I am. You might have a good point there. I am business ass Sega in my mind right now. <laughs> And, of course, business ass Sega isn't necessarily creative ass Sega, but <laughs> business ass Sega says, hey, Archie's giving me money. I can tell based on history that they're going to continue giving me money as long as I, as long <laughs> as they keep in business and want to put out these Sonic comics. You know what? Let's, let's, let's just have at it because I don't see – unfortunately, I don't see other publishers necessarily – carrying something as Sonic oh. as long oh, and yeah, as, as storied long. as the history of Archie Sonic has been. I could certainly see Sonic going over to Boom if something horrible happens at Archie, but yeah, like I don't think it would be I doubt I doubt it would be quite the same thing or treat it with quite the same care. Oh even here's the if thing Ian Flynn came with it. I'm I'm ki- I'm kind of Okay, I'm holding stuff back on what I actually want to say oh, because sp- speaking is- of, did you know that uh, the latest? <laughs> sorry, yeah. the latest uh, IDW Ninja Turtles is actually re- written by Ian Flynn. Yeah. I now, know. You, uh, now you learn how to use a segue. <laughs> I heard about heard about that uh, that a few months ago. Yeah. I will have to look into that because I freaking love the modern Ninja Turtles that aren't the movie. The cartoon that is on. But the movie's the best. Oh yeah, another well, thing with CGI characters and live action people. <laughs> actually, that set the second one, the one that we've been showing trailers for lately, that okay, actually I doesn't know, look half bad. I know. <laughs> it I could know. just be a good trailer, you know. I yeah. know the tur. I know. Look in. Listen. Listen. I know the turtle fans that have seen that and kind of saw. You know what? This could be stupid and fun. I acknowledge that. But the well has been poisoned for me. Ah, uh, yes, sorry. yes, I attempted to watch that movie, and just for a lark, not seriously, and I still couldn't get through it. I got bored with it, went out and got McDonald's, then came back for the for the ending. Because <laughs> Corey was watching it. I, I am sorry. You gotta get your visuals up to par. You can't have your turtles look... The, the freaking puppets <laughs> look better yeah. than the CG m- monster people that monster you decided people. to put on screen. I mean, some people compare them to Shrek, but that's a really big insult to the work DreamWorks did on uh, on their Shrek movies, because the, the, Shrek still looks kind of aesthetically pleasing as a character, whereas these these turtles are just... No. I've seen more rational <laughs> rubber kaiju. <laughs> but I will say that they are more expressive than rubber kaiju. But those expressions are in horrible face, horrible looking faces. No offense to turtles. Turtles can look adorable when they don't look half human. But these half human mutant turtles look hideous. You know, you know how turtles can look good. You, you, make, you make them in CG, you make them in a CG world, you give them to the team that had made Fanboy and Chum Chum before, <laughs> you make them a little bit angular, you kind of spruce them up for the modern age, you give them kind of the Teen Titans type relationship, and you got good turtles! Oh, so, got, so you're oh, talking about I, that... Uh... You're talking about that uh, that CGI movie from from uh, last from the from the 2000s, right? I haven't seen that one. <laughs> I've actually heard decent things about it. So it, it I, is decent. <laughs> it's funny. I see a lot of people hate on that, and I kind of like that movie, the TMNT. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't. Uh, for people I've talked to that have seen it, I've never heard anything like damning about it. I've I've kind of heard. I've heard people basically say, hey, yeah, this is pretty okay. This is pretty yeah, good. Yeah, like, it's got good action, got, got solid character. Raph is pretty much the star of the movie, and he, you know, whenever they focus, you, you focus on Raph, it's, it's going to be decent, I think, because Raph is probably the most interesting of the turtles. So, so here, here's here's kind of where this conversation gets a little dark, because I, I can. Oh, Lord. You can tell me no. No. But I've been watching. But I've been watching the '80s. I've been watching the '80s series. No, I got. The, I got no, the, it comes. It no. comes. Party wagon. It oh my god! No, like six discs. I watched through the first whole two seasons. Uh... <laughs> I, I'll, 
I'll stop it there. I'll stop it there. <laughs> I, will, I, I didn't touch I the that, 80s series. I did. I, the I watched songs, the comic. But... I read the comics, and I saw the first uh, Jim Henson movie, and I thought that was awesome. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Turtles. Turtles in a half shell. Turtle power. Or heroes I, I, in a half shell. Heroes in a half shell. It's like the catchy song. I <laughs> listen. Let, Listen, I I only watch the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Look, you know that, it. <laughs> Go on. Do you even, do you even know what they, they could they couldn't call them ninjas in Europe because of uh, <laughs> violence related issues. They're the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. But I, I I will say that um, so like instead of saying because we're ninjas, they say because we're heroes. Is that I have I have no freaking clue. I I I wasn't. Six years old in Europe at the time. <laughs> really? I, I, honestly, you are probably better off asking the community in which this podcast is posted about that because uh, okay, community, most of them will be European. Me. Most answer of them me have in the comments, please. Uh, six years did they, old in Europe. Did they replace it. every instance of them saying ninjas with the word turtles? A anyway, hero. like regarding that old s- <laughs> hero, <Yeah. laughs> but regarding that old series. Like it's just like every other '80s series, where it like has a really awesome opening, but then the actual show is shit unless you're five years old. And okay, I re- realize that. In addition to insulting the San- Sanders people and Trump people, I've also just insulted everyone who grew up in the '80s because I guess insulted uh, Transformers, Thundercats, Mask, and Teenage Mutant Turtles, and God knows what else. But I just can't stand that crap. I'm sorry. The only good '80s series were the Disney shows like Gummy Bears and DuckTales, especially gonna, Gummy Bears. I'm going to challenge you on one point. Um, I, I, I've been watching, the, I, like I said, I made it to the first two seasons. And yes. in terms of humor, uh, it's garbage. In, ter- <laughs> in terms of writing, it's super awkward. In terms of animation, it has its moments for the 1980s. I mean... The, it, it wasn't like filmation quality or Hanna Barbera quality or anything huh. on those. Well, lines. we're setting the, we're, we're setting the bar really low right now. We're we're going to Hanna Barbera and filmation. <laughs> I, I am saying it's better than those, but yes. Um, but I will give it this: the seasons and episodes so far have had through lines, and I as, have as, heard of that. As far as through lines go, they're pretty okay through lines. Mm. I, I kind of want to watch. I kind of want to watch more of it, even I though I know that the humor is is pizza even worse than Jason's. <laughs> I'll pick on Jason. Hey. He makes me laugh every now and then. Oh, not always on purpose, but he makes me laugh. Unlike the turtles. Hey. <laughs> See, he's making me laugh right now. <laughs> and that just about wraps it up for Turtle okay! Talk. Screw you. We're not done yet. <laughs> I, <laughs> hey, I, le- I just learned how to wrap up a conversation in this show. Uh, yeah, I could go completely off topic. <laughs> and then, ins- and then insult Jason. <laughs> but I will show. say that I, before I ever tried to watch the, the Turtle shows, I did read through their and their like their their seasonal arc Wikipedia thingies, and like they're talking about going to space and alternate dimensions, and it sounds so cool. Then I like watched the first two episodes of the first season. It's like, oh my god, people like this! I would have I, liked this when I was five. Part part <laughs> of me is curious if it gets better at the later seasons. That's one of the reasons why I want to continue watching because uh, you know for as long as that series ran it replaced writers it replaced artists all that stuff okay i i i I will admit that if turtles starred dinosaurs i probably would have loved it because i did love dino saucers when i was a dumb little kid there's a lot of shows in the 80s where I absolutely love the intro, but I could not watch the cartoon. Like the Dino cartoon Saucers, I really and Power Ring. Okay, those are tech, that the last one's technically a '90s series. Even the but real Ghostbusters openings, like, terrible shows. <laughs> yeah, um, the real Ghostbusters had an awesome opening. Uh, Denver, Mas- the last dinosaur had Mask- an awesome Mas- opening. Mas- which had and a so- very Sonic Sad Am. 
Denver, hey. the last dinosaur. <laughs> so how sad I am, even though I've cooled on it since I've, since I've grown up, is still far more enjoyable than those other series, so shut the hell up. Uh, pole position? I, <laughs> is that the pole position? Song? Baiting yeah. the audience. Hey, yeah. I've been doing that all night. You don't have to do it, too. Yeah, I've because... already incurred their wrath. You're Mega baiting. Man is probably one of my favorite intros that ha- to a shitty cartoon. <laughs> uh, that's, me, that's that's on my bucket list. <laughs> for me, it's probably Power Rangers, because as much as TMNT sticks in my head, Power Rangers really sticks in my head. <laughs> like, that is just such a hardcore, awesome opening to the Dixiest show I've ever seen. <laughs> Which, again, I loved it back in the day because they had robot dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals that were not dinosaurs. Uh, like, you loved terrible. it back in the day because you were male and a child. And I know. I, ha- I fell like out of love with it within six oh, months. <laughs> it was but, a very brief love affair. But in those six months, you were male and a child going to school with other children. Well, really, I guess... I, I'm serious when I, when I say I guess like it because they're robot dinosaurs. Because I didn't like any of the other Power Rangers knockoffs, like Beetleborgs. Oh, did, did, but let's watch it. Oh, Beetleborgs, yeah. <laughs> Loving that Beetleborgs. Yeah, had beetles in it, probably. I mean, my only uh, 80s show that I loved was the Robotech, the Macross side. I, oh, Star Blazers. You're old, Jason. I bet you remember Star Blazers. <laughs> I, I didn't really Heinstein. watch it. No, I didn't really get into 70s anime outside of Speed Racer. I should. Oh, Speed my Racer God. Speed Racer was awesome. That's really no, old. No, Speed Racer is also horrifying. Um, this but, is childhood. Oh my god, Jason. Robotech Macross. That was that was the first like soap opera for twelve year olds. I mean, that yeah, was I've, that I've, was my, dark. I've, that was very dark anime. Very yeah, dark sci fi. They didn't Robotech. really hold back. And I've actually seen Star Blazers, which is which is pretty good for a an anime that was dubbed in 1980 cuz they like they actually had like drama and war talk and like these guys sit in a war room and talk strategy <laughs> it's just so weird when you line that up with things dumb stuff like speed racer where speed racer's blind because he won't open his eyes i mean Robotech kind of is killing off one of the head characters uh no inter- they didn't die an they interracial he went to a hospital planet, and then he came back. Yeah, interracial relationship. He's on the farm and in, with the other ancestral uh, relationship. I mean, it's crazy. Well, that's Japan. That's just Japan. I, I, ho- I hope I'm not forget. I hope I'm not uh, attributing another show to this. May have been Vol- I think it was Voltron that had the brother. The brother. This guy died. He went to a hospital planet, and then they. Then when his. Tw- like his younger brother came and replaced him. They said, "Oh, we came back from the hospital." No, that's the same. That's a different, completely okay, different. Okay, I think I think that may have been Voltron. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, check out Robotech Macross Saga, or just Macrosses. I think that one's been uh, local. And Star Blazers, and Gummy Bears, and Ducktales, and also Gargoyles. I never got into Gummy Bears because it reminded me too much of Spurs, Gummy so I Bears. That was too, too for me. Bouncing here and there and everywhere. But uh, Ducktales is awesome. Yes, yeah. I, I concur. DuckTales. Woohoo! Do, 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 do. So what, what, what is it, next year that we get new DuckTales, or is it this year? I think, I'm pretty sure it's 2017. Because, like, I remember when they announced it, I was like, wow, they were really announcing this in advance. So, yeah, and for, I, I, are they, you know if they're getting the original voice actor for Scrooge? Uh, that, I, I bet they would try, that... I don't know. He's got to be so old by he is, now. He is in his nineties. Oh, yeah. the, the, the vo- yeah, he, no, sure he's still survive. doing the voice. They're doing they're doing Mickey Mouse shorts with really? Uncle Scrooge. Uh, uh, occasionally I, appears in these in these Mickey Mouse shorts. Wait a minute. And he's still and he's you're still doing, the voice. doing it in the game, but I didn't know he was still doing it in Mickey Mouse shorts. You're, yeah. you're bearing the lead here. You're telling me that they had Uncle Mickey Mouse the new Mickey Mouse shorts with Uncle Scrooge in them. Yes, Uncle Scrooge starred oh, in about two or three. Wow, not starred, but he's cameoed. This. He's cameoed in about yes. two or three episodes. I was gonna play Devil's Third after this. Damn it! I'm never gonna get to play that shitty game. Well, uh, I, you're not missing much. Sounds... Just watch more Ducktales. I think your time is better spent. <laughs> yeah, the honestly, I will say I tried watching Ducktales a, a couple of years ago and was a little underwhelmed by it. <laughs> Unlike well, Gummy Bears and Tailspin, by the way. I mean, Tailspin I, is awesome. 
I was a little underwhelmed by it, but once I, once I kind of like had it in the background, I was like, <clears throat> yeah, this is still pretty good. Like <laughs> this, this is still super solid. I don't necessarily okay. want to focus on it the whole time, but yeah, it's I can see why I and everyone else in the 80s and 90s friggin' love this. Hmm. I'll, I'll give it another shot then. I know the tailspin still holds pretty holds up pretty well for me, and so does gummy bears, which surprises the hell out of me. It's the Dark, Darkwing Duck has its moments still. Oh, Darkwing Duck's still pretty damn good. I I had that running on YouTube. And was like, damn. Don't tell Disney. I, I was watching on YouTube. I also watched Gargoyles on YouTube. Let, let's know. just <laughs> let let's frickin' House of Mouse all these old Disney afternoon cartoons and just get the one universe with DuckTales and uh Bonkers and bo- yeah and Bonkers <laughs> and Dark No, Wing not and- Bonkers. I was expecting you to yell at me when I said Bonkers. <laughs> no, it's no no I Hey, you can fit everything into that kind of thing. Like you get the interaction, like you just get I, everything in there. Okay, the Jason just sent me a picture of Scrooge McDuck sexually caressing money from Twitter. Um, I'm pretty sure I already sent you access once. Maybe yeah, it's, it's a Wait, parody no, I sent, of a Spider no, I sent Woman story. Oh right, <laughs> right the, with the ass in the air. Right, okay. I thought hey. he was just, just. I mean, I guess I got the general idea anyway. But <laughs> listen, listen, I've. <laughs> I've already seen the cover of Sonic being uh, <laughs> basically getting sodomized by Nogus. Like, that's nothing. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, that, uh, the, the cover of Sonic getting sodomized by Nogus. How did they let that go to print? Next time on eighties car- on the 80s cartoon podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, we have gone so off the track, it's <laughs> ridiculous. Well, okay, the important thing is that we have a good conversation. I am starving. I am wanting to get my... Really? You, you don't want to start talking about uh, 90s cartoons like Gargoyles and Bonkers and Aladdin and how Disney Afternoon kind of slowly began to lose its jive, and then we got Mighty Ducks, which I were mean, literally probably... Mighty Ducks who shot pucks out of guns who came from an alternate dimension. Yeah, get those in the, the multiverse, too. <laughs> Uh, I, I think it's best if we stop because all I want to talk about right now is Sonic and Sodomy. So I think that's a good reason to stop. I think that'd be a, I think that'd be a very fu- I think that'd be a fine discussion. Why, why why would you why do you connect Sonic with Sodomy GX? Because of the cover that I said multiple times. Yes, I know, but like oh crap, my 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 laptop's dying. <laughs> Where get this thing plugged back in? Jason, you need to learn how to stop a conversation. And end no, yourself. he's Please doing what a podcast stop. person. I've been trying to. I've been trying to stop it for a half an hour. That's where so you gone. interrupt, sir. <laughs> that's, that's where you. That's you where you say me okay. Talk about Sonic and sodomy. What kind of person are you? I should say, Alex. I'm going to let you speak, but first, I have to turn off the podcast. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, really time to wrap this up. Uh, thanks for listening, folks, as we went, like, about, what, 20 to 30 minutes off the Thank rails. you for listening this far. And um, if you have made it this far, I, w- I would like to say that... Um, uh, I'd hmm. like to say this is what happens whenever you have very small show notes, Jason. I w- yeah. I w- <laughs> well, we could have been. I w- I well, like they were, say that they were for an hour like show. We've gone, we've gone almost to two hours now. Also, Martin O'Malley is silly. Hmm. All right, and everyone, just say goodbye now so we can get going. No. Remember, there is an Archie cover where Sonic gets sodomized by a wizard. <laughs> uh, goodbye, everybody. And uh, oh, do yourself a favor and watch Black Lagoon. Just a, a random, just a random thing. I don't but care not who you before are. you watch Ninja watch Turtles. Black. No, well, actually, yeah, yeah. Watch them both side by side. It'll, it'll provide provide a, a nice contrast. Picture in picture, turtles in the big picture. <laughs> no, no. Equal sized pictures. Jason, and we are up. out of here. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Peace.